She's the one making all the magic happen. Okay. Well, she needs to give a small. Let's have to lead the way. African nations like Kenya and Rwanda and many others have led. Using single use plastic have shown that it is entirely possible. For over a decade, this has been in place in a number of countries. African businesses have innovated in spaces like mobile money. We see this here in this country. And Africa is a continent of natural resources that can be used for planet friendly alternatives and substitutes to plastic. Friends, the coming days will be crucial, and it's in your hands. Um, INC3 must be a strong next iteration, uh, must see, excuse me, a strong next iteration of the draft and a mandate for the chair to get ready for the next round of negotiations in Ottawa with that next iteration ready. So I ask that you embrace the Nairobi spirit that you embrace this beautiful country that we are so proud to call our home, that you are ambitious, that you are innovative, that you are bold, and that you use these negotiations to hone a sharp and incisive instrument so that together we can carve a better future free from plastic pollution. Kenya is delighted to host this session, particularly because it was here in Nairobi that humanity spoke in one voice at the United Nations Environmental Assembly 5-2 when 170 nations agreed to launch negotiations towards a globally binding instrument. The scope of the instrument was supposed to clearly reflect the requirement of Resolution 514 of the United Nations Environmental Assembly, including ending plastic pollution across the full cycle of all plastics and addressing its effects on human health and the environment, and especially the marine environment. The committee was tasked to draft at least three things. Number one, a global instrument that promotes sustainable product design and eliminates the most harmful and high-risk plastic categories, including problematic polymers, chemicals of concern, products and applications, and bring overall plastic production to sustainable levels. Number two, ensures the need to enshrine sustainable production and consumption patterns and environmentally sound management of plastic waste, which also addresses existing plastic pollution. And number three, to support the application of the Rio principle, including the polluter pays and precautionary principles, the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities, and emphasizes the importance of operationalizing those principles throughout the provision of the instrument. I want to commend the committee for the work you have already accomplished in your first and second, and second sessions. I believe I speak for many across the world when I say I am encouraged and confident that you will deliver a global instrument on time and lead a monumental shift in our relationship with the planet and with each other. The global community is waiting with great anticipation for the instrument that you will develop to chart a global plan for tracking plastic pollution. This anticipation is heightened by the zero draft. And it is the shared belief of many that this third session presents an opportunity for you, distinguished delegates, to convert the draft into a plan. The zero draft serves as a rallying call for global collective action for our planet through various interventions, such as the reduction of plastic produced, elimination of problematic and short-lived plastics, investments in solid waste management policies, and a just transition by integrating workers, especially in the informal settings, to ensure that no one is left behind in the shift from a linear to a circular model of plastic life cycle management. The ambition for the zero draft is a welcome signal 
that the world is one step closer to ending plastic pollution, one of the biggest contributors to the triple planetary crisis. I commend the committee for your inclusive approach and incorporating the views of diverse stakeholders. This draft is a product of true environmental multilateralism. I would like to affirm Kenya's commitment to ending plastic pollution. We demonstrated this commitment with a ban on the manufacture and use of polythene bags in 2017, followed closely in 2020 with a ban on single-use plastics in protected areas such as national parks, forests, and beaches. Further, in July 2022, Kenya enacted the Sustainable Waste Management Act, which made our country the first in the world to subject all products, including plastics, to extended producer responsibility. We know this is not enough, and we are ready to play our part in the elimination of plastic pollution. Nobel laureate Wangari Mathai, a daughter of our own soil, taught us the principle of the hummingbird, which is essentially beginning to do the work bit by bit until it is done. I thank the African Ministerial Conference on Environment for proposing that the UNEP headquarters in Nairobi be the host of the Secretariat for the Plastic Convention. The chairman of Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee in the synthesis paper to be considered at this meeting has also seconded this idea. I humbly ask member states to support this proposal to host the Secretariat at UNEP headquarters here in Nairobi. And I'm saying this because we have been very generous. Many of uh, the environment treaties that have been agreed upon in the past have gone to other destinations, which is something we value. But because UNEP today has grown and we need some grandchildren here, and one of them is going to be this treaty once it's agreed upon. It is now time for investors, multinational corporations, and technology companies to shift strategic investment to reduce their plastic waste footprint. We call upon producers and innovators to rethink plastic products and packaging to reflect the principles of reuse, refill, repair, and repurpose for exploring alternative options such as non-plastic substitutes, alternative plastics, and plastic products that do not have negative environmental, health, and social impacts. I invite innovators to come and invest in Africa because the continent has natural resources that can be used for planet-friendly alternatives. This is an opportunity for African plastic alternative industries to become market leaders and drive economic growth and transformation on our continent, create jobs, create opportunities, unleash the, use, uh, the huge potential that exists in our continent. Innovation has moved humanity forward for centuries, helping people overcome numerous threats and challenges. The elimination of plastic pollution is a threat that demands innovation. This is the reality and challenge that industry and private sector must accept and look for opportunities in other alternatives. The world is in need of alternatives and ways of making plastics circular. This calls for investment in mechanisms to make technology transfer and transformation easy and possible. As we begin this third session of the Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee, I urge all the negotiators to recall that 2024 is only six weeks away and only two other meetings to go. I reiterate my confidence in your ability to get this done. 
to repay the faith humanity has placed on you to deliver this moment in history, to chart a path forward for the planet and people against one of the biggest threats we have ever faced. To deal with plastic pollution, humanity must change. We must change the way we consume, the way we produce, and how we dispose our waste. This is the reality of our world. Change is inevitable. This treaty, this instrument that we are working on is the first domino in this change. Let us bring it home, because in any case you are at home. Let the change begin. Thank you very much. We have a special working day. We are all working but planting trees in Kenya. It is not a holiday as such. It is a special working day. And we are committed that today we are going to plant 100 million trees in Kenya today. <laughs> and, it, and it is because we have made a commitment that we are going to plant 15 billion trees in the next 10 years. And this is because we believe in the environment, and that is why UNEP is here in Nairobi. And I want to, I don't know whether you read clearly your invitation letters. There was a small print somewhere, you might want to check, that said that before you leave Nairobi, you must plant a tree. <laughs> and I have issued... <laughs> I have issued very firm instructions that nobody leaves the airport until they are planted their tree. <laughs> so please, plant your tree. And uh, I will ask you to do one more thing. When you plant that tree, because we need to look after it when you leave, please download either in the Apple Store or in Android an app. It's called Jaza Miti. Jaza Miti, let me... Let me uh, let me give you the word J-A-Z-A, -A, that is Jaza, and then Miti, M-I-T-I. -I. Download, take a picture, it will go into our website, we will know where the tree is, and we will look after it when you have planted. Because that app will enable us to know the geolocation of the tree you have planted. So, I am making that request to all of us who are here. We will be very proud if you can join our tree planting effort. Uh, the Ministry of Environment has made all the tree, tree seedlings for each one of you available in this compound. And uh, it is also free. So uh, let me say thank you very much. I wish you well, and we look forward to a good product. God bless you.